So we are going to carry on from that today. That the last word of this narration was that this person will be thrown into the fire, but he's actually being thrown into the paradise. From this, we have a few narrations regarding this trial of the jail also. The Prophet ﷺ said, I know what will be the jail, or I know what will be with the jail more than the jail himself. I know what he will possess. With him will be two streams, two rivers, two flowing rivers. One of them to a visible to the eye will be ma'un abyad, it'll be clear water. And the other that will be visible to the eye it will be a fire that will be flaming, a flaming fire. If one of you sees this, then he should go to that stream, to that river, which the people see or which he sees as the fire. And he should close his eyes and he should lower his head and he should drink from that stream, from that river of fire. Why? Because فَإِنَّهُ مَا أُنْبَارِدٌ In reality, that stream of fire is actually cold water. And then the Prophet ﷺ mentions about the eye of the Dajjal. In the other narration, the Prophet ﷺ says that indeed the Dajjal will emerge and with him will be water and will him, with him there will be fire. So that which the people see as water that in reality will be a fire that will be burning. And that which the people see as fire, that in fact will be cold and sweet water. So whoever amongst you sees this, he should plunge, he should dive into that which he sees as the fire, because in reality it will be sweet water. And in Bukhari Sharif to the same effect that indeed with him there will be water and there will be with him fire. His fire will be cold water and his water will be fire. Now, in Fathul Bari, which is a commentary on Bukhari Sharif, it is mentioned that will this fire and will this water, will it be a reality? Will Dajjal actually have a stream of fire and a stream of water with him? So one of the possibilities that have been suggested is that here, when it is referring to Jannat, inna ma'ahu Jannat, that with him will be Jannat and with him will be a fire, it is referring to bounties and blessings. And as for the fire and as for the nar, it is referring to difficulties and hardships. Meaning the jal for those who follow him. For those who follow him, their life will be heaven on earth. It will be very luxurious. As we see in the following narrations, and we've studied this narration previously as well. The Hazrat Mughira ibn Shu'ba, anhu, he says that I used to ask the Prophet ﷺ about the Jal more than anybody else. The Prophet ﷺ one time said that, what worries you about the Jal? He's not going to be able to harm you. Why do you keep on asking questions? Why are you scared of the Jal? He's not going to be able to harm you. So Hazrat Mughira replied, it is because the people say that with him there will be food and with him will be rivers and streams. And in another narration it is mentioned that with him will be mountains mountains of bread and mountains of mutton and mountains of water meaning he will not literally a mountain of these things he will have these things in abundance mountain loads of water and we mentioned this yesterday we studied this yesterday or on Thursday rather that he will go to a city from his trials is that he will go to an area and he will say to them that I am your lord you accept me as your lord and those people, they will deny him. So what will happen? Okay, he'll say, okay. And he will leave that area. They will think, okay, we have been saved. But when he leaves that area, all of their wealth will follow the jar, just like how the bees follow the honeybee. He will leave that area and their wealth will follow him. The next morning, they will see that they have nothing left of their wealth. So for those who, are, who do not follow him, their life will be hell on earth. But for those who follow him, the Jal will have mountain loads of bread and he will give it to them. And we mentioned in that narration as well that he will go to a city and he'll claim to be God and they will accept him as their Lord. So now what will happen? He will say to the sky that send down rain and the sky will send down its rain. 
and he will say to the earth that produce your vegetation and he will produce his vegetation. So we see from this that those who are there, those who follow him, they will be living a luxurious life. But those who do not follow him, they are going to be in hardship, they are going to be struggling, they are going to be living a life of poverty and they are going to, very, they are going to struggle a lot. And in the next narration we actually have slightly more detail about this. That it is mentioned from Hazrat Asma radiallahu anha that she said that the Prophet sallallahu said that it, uh, before the Dajjal, before the Dajjal's emergence, there will be three years. In the first year, Sanatun tumsiku sama thulutha qatriha. That in the first year before the Dajjal, the sky will withhold one third of its rain and it will withhold one third of its vegetation. And then the second year before the Jal emerges, the sky will now withhold two thirds of its rain and two thirds of its vegetation. And the third year, meaning just as the Jal is about to emerge, the sky will now withhold all of its rain and will withhold all of its vegetation. So you can imagine that at that time there will be no vegetation, there will be no food. How will people survive unless you follow him? And it's mentioned at the end of this hadith. The Hazrat Asma actually said this to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam that, um, you know, we need our dough. We need our dough and we do not cook it except that in that time we become hungry. Meaning whilst we are needing our dough, you know, we start to become hungry already. So what is going to happen to the believers in that day when they will not have any food? How are they going to survive? For us, we are in the kitchen and we are cooking the food and we are already hungry. You know, in Ramzan, we are watching the clock. Uh, iftar is at 7.55, we are sat down on the, the stakhan from 7.30 just staring at the clock. When is iftar going to be? How are the believers going to survive on that day? So the Prophet ﷺ replied that that which suffices the people of the sky will suffice them. What does that mean? Mean at this be he with the qadis, i.e., this be the praise of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will suffice them. How will they survive? By doing the zikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Subhanallah, alhamdulillah, wa la ilaha illallah, wallahu akbar. Remembering Allah, praising Allah, that will be a means of sustenance for them. By this, automatically their bellies will be full. For those that will be true believers. Because so that which suffices the people in the sky, they are referring to the angels. The angels, they do not eat. It comes in the Quran Kareem about one incident when Ibrahim salam, they came to him some people, some visitors. And they were in fact angels in the form of humans. So angels can come in the form of humans. And Ibrahim salam, did not recognize that they were angels. He thought they were just visitors that come from out of town. And Ibrahim salam, he was the first person who hosted people, hosted guests. So Ibrahim salam, he was very generous. He saw that these visitors have come from out of town. They might be hungry. So he rushed straight away and he went and got them some food. And then he presented this roasted barbecue in front of them. But what does he see? He sees that these people aren't eating any food. Now at that time it was a custom that whoever doesn't eat your food, they are your enemy. It is because they are your enemy that they do not eat your food. So Ibrahim alayhi salam got slightly anxious that why are they not eating the food? So then the angel said to him that you do not need to worry. We are the messengers of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We are in fact angels. So angels, they do not eat. How do they survive? Is they survive by tasbih. They are praising Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and remembering Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala 24-7. Just as we breathe and we are talking and we breathe and we do any other activity, the same way they breathe and they do whatever other, uh, they do the zikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and they fulfill the other responsibilities of that they have been given. So at that time, the believers, how will they survive? They will survive by the zikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, by remembering Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But they will also have to struggle in the meantime they won't get any actual sustenance. So that is the first possibility that when it is talking about here that he will have with him a Jannat 
he will have with him water that is referring to blessings water is actually a great blessing so that those who follow him they will have great blessings and then what it says that his water is actually fire meaning they will live the luxurious life on this earth but in the hereafter they're going to go to jahannam and as for his fire being a jannat meaning that those muslims they, who do not follow the jihad they will have to struggle they will have to endure hardships on the earth but in the hereafter where they're going to go they're going to go to jannah so that is the first possibility the second possibility is that this will be an illusion now we've got to remember the jal is a very big sahir is a very big magician and this is you know we mentioned previously some of the things it will actually be that he will possess those things and some it will just be an illusion so some have suggested that this fire that he will have with him and this water that he will have with him it'll just be an illusion some have even said it'll be because you know you the people will have endured so much difficulty they will be hallucinating they will be seeing things but the third opinion is that he will actually have a river of water and he will actually have a river of fire and it is the literal meaning and this is the more correct meaning i just thought I'd, you know mention the other two meanings for those of you who are interested but this third meaning you know there's no reason why we shouldn't take it to be literal and it is the more correct opinion and this is actually you know backed by another narration in ibn majah sharif it's mentioned that he will ha that from his fitnas is that he will have a paradise jannah and he will have a fire and his fire is jannah and his jannah is actually fire so whoever amongst you is examined by his fire then what should you do number one fal yastaghith billah you should seek help through allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and number two you should read the opening verses the first few verses of surah kahf so we've already highlighted the importance of reading the first few verses of surah kahf and alhamdulillah none of you came to me apart from one of you so i i you know i understand that all of you know how to read surah kahf you know it perfectly and inshallah now you will be making an effort to learn it off by heart as well inshallah so this again highlights the importance that at that time when the jal will be examining the people and he'll say you know he'll be throwing people into the fire or the and, or he will give an option this is my fire this is my uh, jannat then at that time people should read the first few verses of surah al kahf and what will be the result of this the hadith says that because of this the fire will be will become on them it will be cold and salaman it will be peaceful it will be safe just as the fire was cold and peaceful and safe upon ibrahim alayhi salam so this shows that literally there will be a fire and it will be due to the mercy of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that that person he will be thrown into the fire but that fire will become cool just as ibrahim alayhi salam he was thrown into a fire ibrahim alayhi salam قالوا حرقوه وانصروا آلهتكم. He went to his nation and he tried explaining to them, why are you worshiping these idols? These idols they don't listen to you. They neither harm you. They neither benefit you. Why are you worshiping them? And one day eventually he broke one of the idols. And it's a long story. But at the end they got Ibrahim alayhi salam. They knew. it was him and then they decided to punish ibrahim alayhi salam so what did they say they said burn him and help your lords <coughs> so what did they do for it to set for a month they gathered gathered woods for a whole month they gathered woods and they burnt that fire as he said that if a bird passed by that area it would die because of the heat of that fire and then eventually they threw ibrahim alayhi salam into that fire but it was the mercy of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that when they threw ibrahim alayhi salam into the fire allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's mercy and allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's instruction came to the fire qulna ya nar kuni bardan wa salaman ala ibrahim we said to the fire oh fire become cold and it is said that when ibrahim alayhi salam was thrown into the fire the only thing that was burnt was the rope or the handcuffs which they used to tie ibrahim alayhi salam up that was the only thing that was burnt and apart from that the fire became extremely cold kuni barda become cold and before allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said the next bit become safe 
He just said, become cold. So he said, this fire became so cold that the cold would have harmed Ibrahim alayhi salam. Ibrahim alayhi salam would have died of the cold. But then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, become cold and safe. So now that fire become, became the perfect climate for Ibrahim alayhi salam. It was neither too warm, it was neither too cold. It was perfect for Ibrahim alayhi salam. And from the outside, it was extremely hot. The people could not come close to that fire due to the heat. For seven days, they did not come close to the fire due to its heat. And then after seven day, days, they thought, okay, let's go see Ibrahim alayhi salam's ashes. Let's go see his ashes. And when they go close to that fire, what do they see? They see Ibrahim alayhi salam is safe and secure and he is praying in that fire. SubhanAllah. So the same way that Ibrahim alayhi salam was protected, it was an actual fire, the same way Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will protect the true believers during the time of the job. So it will be a literal fire that he will possess.